story time on how my catfish tinder date hit a camera in my bathroom okay so boom let's get right into it so i met this guy on tinder and obviously we both were interested in each other he was very handsome and most importantly he was tall i'm a tall girl 5'8 to be exact, and a big thing for me is finding a guy who's taller than me or at least the same height. And he fit the description. Ugh, I ended up doing something very, very stupid. I guess I just got way too comfortable because I've gone on many Tinder dates and nothing weird ever happened to me. Plus, I've been texting this guy, talking to him on the phone, and FaceTiming him for over a month. So we set a date at my place for Netflix and chill, and he would bring pizza and wine. I'm a homebody at heart, so I just agreed. Like I said, I was way too comfortable and very stupid little did i know he was a catfishing creep like and follow for part two Part 2 on how my catfish Tinder date hit a camera in my bathroom. Okay, so boom, like I said, I stupidly agreed to do date night at my place. Netflix and chill and he brings pizza and drinks. He rang the doorbell and I was so happy and excited. But when I opened the door, that happiness turned into disappointment real quick. I had to literally look down to greet him. His Tinder profile said 6'5", and he was most definitely looking like 5'6". And even that's being generous, he's probably more like 5'3". We watched the movie and we ate the pizza and we had some drinks i had a good time but i definitely just seen him more like a friend he tried to kiss me and i jokingly said no this is the first date what type of girl do you think i am mind you i've been talking real dirty and nasty on the phone prior to us meeting in person he probably realized i wasn't interested before he left he asked to use the restroom and i said okay that was a mistake back for part three Part 3 on how my catfish Tinder date hit a camera in my bathroom. Okay, so boom, like I said, before he left, he asked to use the restroom and I said, okay. I showed him where the bathroom was and when he was done, he went home. We already established that I was stupid for having my first date with a stranger at my place. Well, after the date, I resumed life as usual and I kind of ignored him for a week. I felt bad and I finally answered one of his phone calls. You know, let him down easy. We started talking and he told me that I was a bit standoffish and asked if he did anything wrong. I said, no, I'm just shy. Then he said, you wear teddy bear panties. I doubt you're shy. My heart sank. Y'all, I was wearing teddy bear panties literally at that moment. I said, how the fuck do you know I'm wearing that? He said, oh, he doesn't know anything. It was just a joke. I hung up, ran to my bathroom and ripped it apart. Like and follow for part four. Part 4 on how my catfish Tinder date hit a camera in my bathroom. Okay, so boom, like I said, after he knew about my teddy bear panties, I ran to the bathroom and tore it apart. I found the camera in my outlet, the outlet where I put my phone charger. I was shocked and I felt so violated, it was sick. He's been watching me naked. I called the police and reported him and at the moment there's no proof that it belonged to him. He never reached out to me again and I thank God he at least lives an hour away from me. But it still sucks because he knows where I live. Be careful on these dating sites guys. And don't be stupid like me and invite anybody to your place. <sighs> Story time on how I slept with my best friend's husband on their wedding day. Okay, so boom. I have a best friend and we've been best friends for 10 years. I love her and care about her, but I have one huge problem. I'm in love with her soon-to-be husband. It's complicated. But let's call him John. Rewinding 10 years back when I met my best friend, I also met John. He was actually my friend first and I really liked him. I told my best friend about him and wanted to get to know him more, so I invited him to come out to the movies with us. Well, by the end of the night, my best friend made a move on him and they ended up kissing. My heart was broken, but when I was in the car with my best friend, she said that we weren't dating yet and it was fair game. At that point, I distanced myself from him because I felt weird about the whole thing and they eventually started dating. About a year later, one day I was alone with John and on this day everything changed between us like for part two part two on how I slept with my best friend's husband on their wedding day okay so boom like I said about a year later one day I was alone with John he actually told me that I was the one he wanted but thought since I invited him to the movies with my best friend and that she made the move he basically thought I was passing him on to her, my friend. I told him, no, that's crazy. I liked you. And we both laughed and hugged it out. But that hug was pretty passionate. 
The chemistry and overall energy between us changed, but we never acted on it. Now, fast forward 10 years later on their wedding day, we were all in the same hotel, but different rooms getting ready. When it was time for all of us to get ready, all the girls went to one room and then all the guys went to the other. My best friend sent me to her room to get a charger and when I entered the room, John was there. I told him I'm sorry that I barged in and he was like, yeah, that's not a problem. But then he walked up to me and, like for part three. Part three on how I slept with my best friend's husband on their wedding day. Okay, so boom, like I said, I told him I'm sorry for barging in and he said, yeah, that's not a problem. But then he walked up to me and said, I don't know, I just can't help it. Every time I see you, I almost wish it was you. And I know y'all gonna hate me for this, but literally for 10 years, I've been fighting off my urges, but at the moment, I just couldn't. I was in love with him and he's not married yet, so fair game, right? Well, we ended up doing the nasty and it was very passionate. Then I went back to the girls' room and acted like nothing happened. I feel like shit, but I can't help but be happy that we at least shared that little moment together. I mean, y'all, I always liked him. We never acted on it again, but now I'm just wondering if I should say anything or should I just leave it alone and never do it again? What should I do, y'all? Story time on how I beat up my toxic mom for New Year's. Okay, so boom, jumping right in. I have a mom who's extremely controlling and doesn't let me do anything. I'm 16 years old and she tells me to do the most outrageous things. Like when she told me I couldn't go out with my friends and I snuck out. So she took away my phone and barred my window. And another time when my mom found out I snuck a boy over, she removed the locks from my room door. Even when it comes to my grades, I think I'm doing pretty all right. I got mostly C's, maybe a D or two, but no F's. But here she comes putting me in tutoring without my permission. And one of the biggest things is when I speak my mind and tell her that I'm my own person and will not be forced to do anything I don't want to, she beats me up with a belt for a quote unquote talking to her disrespectfully. I couldn't continue to deal with my toxic mother, so something had to change she had it coming like for part two part two on how i beat up my toxic mom for new year's okay so boom like i said i couldn't continue to deal with my toxic mother so something had to change i saw a tiktok video saying that going into the new year you should cut off anything toxic in your life so that's exactly what i was going to do i went down to the kitchen and told my mom that i was going to cut her off and going to live with my friend. My mom refused and told me to go to my room. I had enough and I yelled at her, I'm not going anywhere. My mom said, who are you talking to? And I screamed, you, I'm talking to you. Then I pushed her back where she hit the fridge and she pushed me back saying, what are you doing? How dare you? I was filled with so much anger, I tried swinging at my mom and fighting. But my mom grabbed my hand and slapped me. I was in shock and cried and ran to her room where the windows weren't barred. I jumped out her window and ran away, like for part three. Part three on story time on how my mom was jealous of my beauty and I ended up bald because of it. Okay, so boom, let's get right into it. I love my mom so much, but unfortunately, my mom has some insecurities that's pushing us apart. Ever since I was a little girl, everyone said I was so pretty and I should act or model. It always made me happy, and at first, it seemed like my mom was happy too. But something took a turn as I got older and started developing. It's as if my mother took me more so as competition. I'm 16 now, and she gets annoyed every time I'm complimented, even when it's by my own dad who is no longer with her. But my mom jealousy went too far when she started purposely attempting to make me unattractive, starting by cutting off all my hair. I cried, but I couldn't do anything to stop her. I have bad acne that I'm controlling with my skincare regimen, but my mom stopped buying it for me now. Now I'm bald with acne. It gets worse, like for part two. Story time on how my mom was jealous of my beauty and I ended up bald part two. Okay, so boom, like I said, my mom was so jealous of me, she cut my hair and I was bald. She also stopped buying my skincare treatments, so I broke out and got acne. But worst of all, my mom took all, and when I say all, she took all my cute clothes and donated them. I cried and begged my mom not to, and she said that it's for a good cause. I screamed at her saying, I know what you're doing. You're just jealous and trying to make me look ugly. 
She told me I didn't know what I was talking about. Then she grounded me. I told my dad what my mom was doing and he screamed at her for me, calling her sick in the head. I started living with my dad and grew my hair back and fixed my skin and I'm back to wearing cute clothes thanks to my dad. I see my mom from time to time, but I gotta love her from a distance. This is why you should always make sure that your parents are your real parents. Okay, so boom, let's get right into it. So on Monday in my biology class, we're discussing blood types. This girl was trying to figure out why her blood type didn't make sense on her Punnett square. She told her professor that her dad was O and her mom was A, but yet she was AB. My professor explained that that's impossible, that she's confused on the blood types or something. The professor even drew out different Punnett squares to show her. The girl was very persistent that she wasn't wrong on the blood types and was confident that there was something wrong with how the professor was doing it so my professor told her to talk to her parents to double check the blood types and all to make sure that the information was correct so she comes back to class the next day and my professor made it a point to ask if she was mistaken or confused and what she said next shocked the whole entire class ciao like for part This is why you should always make sure your parents are your real parents part two. Okay, so boom, like I said, my professor made it a point to ask if she was mistaken or confused about the blood types. And I tell you, this girl is ballsy. She announced to the entire class of 243 people. Turns out her mother had an affair with her husband's brother, which is his stepbrother. So technically she's been raised by her uncle and not her dad her entire life. Her mom hid it from the both of them for 21 years. Because my professor told her she was wrong with her blood types she figured out her uncle was actually her dad and vice versa and now they're getting a divorce be careful guys you might be living with lies Story time on how I lied to my boyfriend about being the father of my child. Okay, so boom, let's get right into it. So I have a boyfriend who's the love of my life and I'm literally obsessed with him. I want to be with him forever. We've been together for two years, but unfortunately my boyfriend ended up breaking my trust. You see, my boyfriend cheated on me with my best friend and I found out that they've been sleeping with each other for the past year. Once I found out, my boyfriend begged and begged and begged for me to stay and he cut all ties with my friend telling me he doesn't want to lose me i was so hurt but because i loved him so much i forgave him but my forgiveness came with the price i ended up having a one night stand with his best friend i wanted revenge and i was being spiteful and just doing the whole tit for tat thing but little did i know what was to come like for part Part two on how I lied to my boyfriend about being the father of my child. Okay, so boom, like I said, after I found out that my boyfriend cheated on me with my best friend for over a year, I ended up having a one night stand with his best friend because I wanted revenge. I was being spiteful and doing tit for tat. I felt horrible about it and me and his best friend decided not to tell anyone. Well, I got pregnant and without him knowing, I had a DNA test done on my boyfriend. He is not the father. And the only other person I slept with was his best friend. I really feel horrible, but seven years later, my now husband still thinks my seven-year-old son is his. Am I the asshole for not telling him even though he cheated on me first? Story time on how my husband slept with my daughter. Okay, so boom, let's get right into it. So I'm 38 and I'm married to my husband who is 40. I have a daughter who is 16, but it was from a previous marriage and not my current husband. We currently don't have any kids together. Well, I like to say my relationship with my daughter is healthy, but she's very spoiled. I try to set boundaries and work ethic into my daughter, but my husband always gets in the way of that and ends up making me do whatever my daughter says. At first, I thought it was just my husband really stepping into that stepfather role but then it became weird my husband and daughter would plan things without me and be gone for long periods of time my daughter started being really mean to me and tells me how i'm old and she's young and full of life my husband would never defend me when i would tell my daughter that's wrong for her to say after all the sneaking and weird behavior i decided to set my husband and daughter up i promise you what i found out was the last thing i could have ever imagined like 
part two on how my husband slept with my daughter okay so boom like i said after all the sneaking and weird behavior i decided to set my husband and daughter up to see exactly what's going on i placed cameras in my room and my daughter's room plus the kitchen and living room I told my husband and daughter that I'll be going to visit my mom for three days who lived an hour away. And of course, they both declined to go with me. Y'all, I kid you not. Barely even an hour after I left, there it was in my living room camera. My husband and daughter watching a movie making out. Then my daughter hops on the top and they remove clothing. And I think you can see where it went from there. I was in so much shock and anger. I was crying, man. My emotions were all over the place. I called my ex-husband, the father of my my daughter and he came under 10 minutes we both barged into the house where my current husband and daughter were still engaging in crazy activity and it got crazy after this like for part Part three on how my husband slept with my daughter. Okay, so boom, like I said, we both barged into the house where my current husband and daughter were still engaging in crazy activities. My ex-husband took our daughter and started beating her with a belt. Then he screamed at her to go upstairs and put some clothes on, which she did. And then there was my current husband, crying curled up on the floor, completely undressed, might I add, begging my ex-husband not to hurt him or call the cops. He had the audacity to tell us that our daughter was the one who came on to him yes my daughter was the one on camera who initiated everything that was clear as day but you as an adult who is married should know better than to partake in anything with a minor let alone your wife's child i got a divorce immediately but unfortunately my husband faced no jail time and since my daughter wanted to be grown and follow him and tell me she hates me and that's why i can't keep a husband both me and her father disowned her she can go be grown on her own Karma came pretty quick because he ended up passing away from an illness and he cheated and had a baby with another woman while with my daughter who also had a kid by him. It was just embarrassing and messy. My daughter begged for my forgiveness, but I just couldn't do it. She's okay with her dad now, but my daughter having a